Well, hello there and welcome. This is Emily Midget here with you today on the Pink Fresh Studio YouTube channel. And today I have some inspiration using the new hibiscus stamps and dies that I actually illustrated for Pink Fresh's March 2022 release. Um, this stamps, this hibiscus stamp set as uh, coordinating stencils as well as washi tape. Um, and it's a large 9 by 12 stamp set with a coordinating die that's all one piece, which I think is a really great feature. It makes die cutting super, super simple. Um, I'm also going to be using the nested diamonds dies, um, the geoblocks foil plate, which you can see that I have embossed on this aqua colored cardstock using some kind of opalescent um, uh, hot foil that really adds a nice subtle background. I also am going to be using uh, Sennelier watercolors. This is just a 48 set of uh, pre-panned watercolors that I purchased on Amazon and I'll link it below. Um, and it comes with a really vibrant array of colors, which I thought would be perfect for using with these tropical flowers in the hibiscus stamp set. So now for uh, to emboss these, I did use my Tim Holtz um, stamping platform instead of my Misty just because it has a, a, a little bit larger base and this is a large stamp set and I've got it kind of turned on its side. Um, I am using the back side of Arches cold press watercolor paper to emboss these images um, because they are pretty detailed and the, the back side of it is a little bit less textured um, than the uh, typical rough texture of the front side, um, which is, that's always an option if you have a super detailed stamp set. You can always flip that Arches Cold Press watercolor paper over and it gives you a little bit smoother area to work on, but still gives you that texture that's really nice to work with uh, for watercolors with the cold press. So there I've just heat embossed it using the, the um, I've heat embossed the hibiscus stamp set using some silver embossing powder and now I'm going to die cut all of these pieces with one die. I think that is such a great feature with these um, washi tape sets that you get um, so many die cuts and so many images to work with from just one pass through your die cutting machine. I think that's just, just ingenious. So now for today's card, we're just going to be using a few of the images um, from the, uh, and here I'm showing you kind of, the, I don't know if you can see it on the screen very well, the difference between the, the front and the back side of the uh, cold press watercolor paper. And I have a few extras. Uh, to save for a rainy day, a few extra images that I can use. I'm going to be painting these images with my number six round uh, silver black velvet paintbrush, and I have my stamp chamois. Now, my stamp chamois I think is a very important tool when you're watercoloring because it enables you to dab off any excess water that you have on your paintbrush. So, to begin, what I like to do when I am watercoloring any uh, painting, doing any image, I like to lay down a base layer first. This base layer provides just that initial layer of color because as I've said in I think probably every watercoloring video that I've ever done, it's very easy to add color to a watercolored image but it is really difficult to take it away. So if you start light and watercolors do dry lighter than when you lay them down, um, that's just the nature of watercolor. But if you start light, you can always go back and add intensity to certain areas. But if you start too dark, it's really hard to take some of that color away. So now in this video today, we're going to be doing something called glazing, which is where we add, um, it's basically kind of the concept of wet onto dry. So we're going to add our first layer of watercolor allow that to dry, and then go back in later and add another layer of color over the top of that to intensify some of the shadows and some of the edges and um, increase the contrast between the edges of the top, the pet petals on the top, and the petals on the bottom. So I'm just laying down an initial layer of color towards the center of the flower with my paintbrush. I clean my paintbrush off, dab it on my stamp chamois to get any excess water off, and then I pull that color out, that initial layer of intense color, I pull that out towards the edge of the petal and allow it to kind of organically fade out without, if you, if you allow it to, um, cover the entirety of the petal with just that one layer of color, it will make the petal look one dimensional and you won't get that nice contrast and that nice shape and, and uh, movement of the flower that you're after. So here I'm just adding some yellow. I've got a, I've got a kind of a, a wide variety of color palette on this. And when I think of tropical flowers, I think of just 
vibrant, riotous color from when I've, I've been to Mexico a couple of times and just the colors were just so intense and there, it wasn't the, the carefully manicured, you know, color scheme. It was just intense in your face color. And that's what I tried to convey with this little bouquet today. So I've got some, uh, of a variety of flowers. I've got a hibiscus, some plumeria, and I think this is called, um, ginger, uh, red ginger flowers. I think that's what these are. I'm not as good with uh, tropical flowers as I am with other flowers, the names of them. And then I've got just a variety of foliage in this one bouquet. Um, and so I'm just adding some, my base layer of color. We'll go back in after this has dried and we'll add some more intensity to these individual images with their variety of colors. But the basic technique is you lay your color down with your damp paintbrush. You lay that initial um, area of color down, you clean your paintbrush, dab it on your stamp chamois, and pull that color out with the tip of your paintbrush. And you can see throughout the video, I try to keep the point of my paintbrush facing away from me. You'll see that I rotate my, uh, my board that I'm coloring on. I rotate that frequently to allow me to get the best angle for keeping my paintbrush pointing away from me. I think that that gives me the best control over where the paint goes. So you can see I've got my first layer of color all finished on my uh, large bouquet image here. And now we're just going to go back and we're going to do that glazing that I talked about. We're going to, all of these images are dry and we're going to add in a little bit of extra intensity in certain areas to kind of intensify shadows and intensify the contrast between the light and the dark. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra yellow. Now we're gonna go in on the large hibiscus image and we're gonna add a little bit more intensity to some of the shadowed areas. The petals that are kind of tucked underneath the top petals, the area in the center. We're gonna add a little bit of intense color right in the center and the important part is clean your paintbrush, pull, uh, dab that paintbrush on your stamp chamois and then pull that color out with that clean paintbrush and that will help keep you from having kind of a, um, a harsh edge to the edge of that extra layer that you've just put on. If you put that color on there and just let it sit, you're going to get a harsh line where you've let that, that second layer of color sit and dry on your petal. But if you take your paintbrush and you clean it off and you dab it with your stamp chamois so that it's damp, so that it's not sopping wet, just damp, and then you pull that color out all the way to the edge of the petal, it will soften that edge and it will make it have a nice smooth organic fade. So now we have the finished uh, watercolored pieces. I'm going to use the Perfect Sentiments Hot Foil Plate and Dies. I have a, uh, I just went through and die cut a bunch of uh, hot foil sentiments and I keep them in a little bowl in my drawer and I pull them out when I need a sentiment. It's really handy to have all of those sentiments just waiting right there. So now I'm arranging all of my die cuts on top of my uh, nested diamonds vellum die cut. I like to use vellum when I am uh, uh, adding a sentiment to a background that has a pattern on it just because it kind of softens that area behind the sentiment and it gives me a nice canvas to kind of allow that sentiment to pop especially if it's a really bright and colorful or really busy background that sentiment has a little bit of a, um, a focal point to allow that sentiment to pop behind it with the vellum. Now with vellum, you do have to be a little bit sneaky when you're adding your adhesive because it is translucent and it, because it's translucent, it will show adhesive through. So what I am doing, I am applying liquid adhesive to the die cuts that will actually sit on top of that vellum. And then once those, that adhesive has dried, I'm going to flip that vellum die cut over and I'm going to add foam adhesive behind the solid die cuts, not on the vellum on, it's going to be on the vellum itself, but it's not going to be on the uh, section of vellum that does not have any die cut, the blank area. So I'm just going to allow these uh, die cuts to dry with their liquid adhesive, and then I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to use foam adhesive 
just behind the solid portions. And this will kind of hide that adhesive behind the vellum. You have to be really sneaky. And for some reason, my, my camera cut out when I was doing this, and so I only have this portion right here, but you, you know how to assemble a card. So here's the finished product. It's a lovely, colorful, lots of shine and shimmer on this one with the opalescent uh, card base, the foiling on the card base, and then that shimmery sentiment. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to see more content from us in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.